we are very happy to welcome you to this event. And the objective of this is basically and, uh, to reflect on the and lessons learned uh, from the UNODC Youth Crime Prevention Through Sports Initiatives and to highlight the effective and innovative practices from across the globe on the use of sports to strengthen use really resilience against crime, violence and drug And with that preliminary context, I have the great pleasure to give the floor for the welcoming remarks to Ms. Candice Welsh, Deputy Director of the Division of Operations of UNADC, that is joining us from Vienna. Uh, good morning to you, Candice, once again for being with us. You have the floor, please. Thank you very much, Mark. It is my great pleasure to welcome all to this event on promoting holistic youth crime prevention through the use of sport and sport-based learning. I would like to thank our distinguished speakers and all participants for joining us here in the context of the UN Congress on Crime Prevention and Criminal Justice. An important theme of the Congress and the Kyoto Declaration is considering the needs of youth when developing evidence-based crime prevention strategies. Indeed, young people around the world are highly impacted by crime and violence, both as perpetrators and victims. Young people are at a key stage of life for learning and growing. The Kyoto Declaration also stresses the need to engage youth in crime prevention efforts and underlines the importance of sport and recreational programs that can amplify their voices and support them becoming agents of positive change in their communities. Why sport? We have found that sport can be effective in addressing both risk factors and protective factors linked to the victimization people and their engagement with violence and crime. Sport offers a rewarding alternative to criminal behavior. It can provide a sense of belonging, structure, and an outlet for emotion. And it can serve youth from marginalized communities and to provide learning opportunities. Harnessing the impact of sport on individuals for the good of society is recognized the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development as an important endeavor for the United Nations. We are grateful for the role of UNDESA present with us here today in advancing the use of sport for development, peace and security, and in coordinating UN efforts to examine the role of sport in recovering better from the COVID-19 pandemic. As UNODC, we are committed to continue working as one UN in promoting sport for the good of society. Given our specific mandate on crime prevention, the work of UNODC focuses on S16 and achieving peaceful and just societies. Inspired by the UN guidelines on the prevention of crime, as UNODC, we attach great importance to providing opportunities for social development as a way to prevent and reduce crime, rather than focusing solely on law enforcement approaches to crime. Since the causes of crime are complex and varied, crime prevention requires the joint efforts of many different actors across the social, educational, and health fields, and many more. Preventing crime requires a holistic and collaborative approach and to be effective, prevention efforts must be informed by evidence on what works and what doesn't. After the last UN Crime Congress in 2015, UNODC de developed the Global Program for the Implementation of the Doha Declaration with the generous support of the state of Qatar. A key part of this program is the UNODC Youth Crime Prevention Through Sport Initiative, the initiative seeks to build youth and community resilience by using sport to strengthen key life skills, to empower youth, to engage communities, and to provide safe public spaces for positive youth development. Within this initiative, the Line Up Live Up training program allows young people to practice respect, develop their self-esteem and other valuable skills, and to question those attitudes and beliefs which can set the ground for crime and violent behavior. In 2019, a resolution adopted by the UN General Assembly called on governments around the world to integrate 
effort into youth crime prevention and criminal justice strategies and called on UNODC to promote and identify good practices to achieve this goal. Since then, UNODC, in cooperation with a wide range of partners, has undertaken substantial efforts to advance the use of sport prevention, and I'm very proud of the achievements that have been attained. The office supported member states in reaching at-risk groups and marginalized communities, and to promote a multi-agency based and holistic approach to crime prevention. To capture the results and lessons learned after four years of piloting up in 12 countries worldwide, we launched a publication earlier this year entitled Youth Crime Prevention Through Sport, Insights from the UNODC Line Up Live Up Pilot Program. As well, in December 2019, UNODC organized an expert group in Bangkok, Thailand, National experts discussed good practices and developed recommendations on integrating sport into youth crime prevention and criminal justice strategies. The report of that meeting uh, has been at the ongoing Crime Congress and will also be considered by the Commission on Crime Prevention and Criminal Justice later in May. Dear participants, in the words of the Secretary General Antonio Guterres, we must make prevention our priority. I am so pleased that we are joined here today by a panel of such important experts. I'm looking forward to hearing their good practices and practical advice on how we can use sport effectively to address the causal factors of crime and violence. UNODC remains highly committed to this work and to doing so with its partners in helping leverage sport to promote crime prevention. Thank you very much. Thank you, Candice, for setting the stage and going through the role that brought us here to Kyoto in terms of what we have done before in terms of the youth crime prevention through sports. Um, this welcoming remarks will not be completed without acknowledging a key factor for success. And a key factor of success is the strong that UNODC has built with the state of Qatar and its commitment to have uh, funded and policy support to our global program and with great pleasure that I would like to give the floor to His Excellency the Ambassador Sultan Salem al Mansouri, representative of the State of Qatar to the United Nations. Your Excellency, we have the floor and thank you again for being with us. Marco, thank you so much. I'm um, so honored uh, as well. Thank you for your kind words. And I would like to thank all the distinguished speakers and in this important session and wish them all the best uh, and it's my honor as well to address this meeting in a good practice and the lessons learned on the use of sport to strengthening youth resilience in a crime and violence. Doha declaration of the 13th United Nations Crime Congress of 2015 that crime prevention an active program of youth and engagement as well with for them. The Doha Declaration Global Program supported by State of Qatar put this recommendation in action. I commend the achievement of Doha Declaration Global Program in integrating sport into cross-cutting crime prevention and criminal justice strategies. Raising the awareness about the power of the sport for prevention through the large number of social, educational, health and training programs and enhancing capacity of member state to use sport as a tool for effective youth crime prevention. The learning from the lineup live up activities of Doha Declaration Global Program shows the importance of positioning sport-based approaches within more comprehensive and holistic programs, especially political frameworks and plans for uh, and plans for crime and violence prevention. The legacy of Doha Declaration Global Program that may my country is proud to support become after five years an intensive efforts a part of our 
common heritage and we need to build upon it. The complementary nature of the youth crime prevention and the role of the sport as a tool for development and peace in the an unimportant element. Sport have the power to change precipitations, counter prejudice and improve behavior as well as to inspire people break down racial and political barriers and combat discrimination and my country realize the, um, the uh, important role of the sport as the effective tool for peace and the dialogues among nations and in invested a lot of funds and efforts to contribute strongly to our sport activities at the international level. The state of Qatar intended to use the 2022 World Cup competition to launch a global awareness raising campaign on the role of sport as enabler of sustainable development uh, and contribute to the resolution of the justice and peace. We are happy that number number state endeavors in Kyoto Declaration to empower youth to become an active agent of positive change on their communities to support crime prevention efforts, including by, by uh, organization, social education, cultural, uh, uh, recreational sport rela related youth programs and youth fora as well as using social media platform and applications on their digital tools to amplify their voice. Thank you so much. Your Excellency, thank you, Ambassador Mansouri, as usual, for your support. And let me actually pick in one of your sentences on your intervention when you mentioned that Qatar is actually championing the use of sports as a tool for peace, dialogue, and I would add also for crime prevention. Thank you very much for your support. Uh, it's obviously a, another signal of your commitment and your personal commitment to the global program. Thank you very much on behalf of the team. Uh, I will pass to another important part of the program and the initiatives of UNODC, which is the team on UNODC that works on this dimension. So I have a great pleasure to hand over now to Georgia Dimitropolo. She is the UNODC crime Prevention and Criminal Justice Officer and is our team leader that works on the dimension of youth crime prevention through sports. So, Georgia, on behalf of the team, now you have the floor to moderate the next section. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, Marco. But uh, before uh, before starting uh, with a short presentation on the program, I would like uh, to first uh, um, uh, have the pleasure to introduce Mrs. Da Daniela Bass from uh, UNDESA that is going to deliver a video message because unfortunately the time wasn't convenient to be with us live. So I would like to ask the host to play the video from Daniela Bassa. Hello everyone from New York, the United Nations headquarters in New York, uh, where today it's heavily snowing. So we have to keep moving in order to warm up. Now, jokes apart, I would really like to uh, introduce myself. I am Daniela Bass, the Director of the Division for Inclusive Social Development in the Department of Economic and Social Affairs in New York. And uh, the department, as you might know, as the focal point uh, for the United Nations on youth and sport is committed to supporting a coordinated effort for advancing sport for development and peace. And UNDESA is really pleased to co-sponsor this meeting, as we know that sport offers a very important vehicle for uh, violence and crime prevention and contributes to the achievement of the Sustainable Development Goals, particularly 16, on peace, justice and strong institutions. We know that it has been long recognized that sport can make important contributions to both development and peace. And it has a unique capacity to unite people 
it's really a, a fantastic tool to promote multilateralism, regardless of identity, background, or ability. I would like to say the sport creates important convening spaces for young people, allowing them to build meaningful partnerships and exchange views on issues of importance to them, such as peace and sustainable development. And in addition, sport fosters real bonds across identities, helping dialogue, promote mutual understanding and support social inclusion because the sport is also crucial in the adoption of positive life skills among young people, such as cooperation, problem solving and reconciliation, all critical skills in violence prevention efforts. We must also not forget that in order to leave no one behind, which is a central point, as we know, in the 2030 agenda, it is critical that crime prevention frameworks are implemented for and with the participation of social groups that are frequently left behind, including persons with disabilities, indigenous peoples, LGBT people, and those who are internally displaced. In other words, everyone, everyone has a role to play in making societies more resilient to violence and crime, and not only law enforcement. There is now a widespread recognition that sport-based initiatives and programs offer a key entry point for engaging young people in the prevention of violence. Sport can build their resilience and increase their rejection of violence and crime, as well as promote conflict prevention and peaceful coexistence. You see, as young people are disproportionately at risk of facing violence and crime, both as victims and perpetrators, they therefore have a special critical role to play as agents of change that can contribute towards crime prevention and building more just and peaceful societies. The unprecedented impacts of the current pandemic have unfortunately caused a deeper inequalities and in social and economic divides. Let me give you an example. The pandemic has reduced young people's access to public spaces and face-to-face -face activities, including sports and physical activities. And therefore, change is needed, particularly when we approach reopening and recovery post-COVID-19. And as, as schools reopen, sports and physical activity education should be championed to holistically meet the needs of all children and youth. And addressing violence and crime is a very complex challenge and I commend you for tackling this very important topic to effectively harness the power of sport, physical activities in this regard. There is a need to accompany sports-based interventions with public investments in education, access to employment, social services, as well as access to justice, and to rehabilitation where needed. So thank you very much for having invited us as partners in this very important event organized today. And uh, with these uh, nice words from uh, UN Dessa that I think uh, uh, capture very well the contribution of sports uh, and the potential of sports uh, in building our resilient societies to violence and crime, I would like to move on with a very short presentation on our uh, you know, this Global Initiative for Crime Prevention through Sports. I would like the host uh, to ask the host to share the slides for me. So, uh, next slide, please. So, the United you know, Sports Initiatives, as already mentioned, based on sport as a tool for development and peace, the UN standards and norms on crime prevention, calling for evidence based responses, and criminological research on the root causes of crime and the role of sport to address risk and protective factors that related to prevention of youth victimization and engagement to violence. Sports can, in fact, be a very effective vehicle, as we heard, to reach young people, including those that are at risk in marginalized communities and that may be out of school or formal education. 
while there is a limited evidence on the causal link between the participation in sports and the prevention to violence and crime, there are evidence that suggests that sport can be used to effectively engage young people in targeted crime prevention interventions and that such interventions can be, as we heard already, more effective when they are applied as part of holistic and comprehensive responses that target very specific relevant risk factors. Next slide, please. So under the Global Initiative uh, on Sports, UNODC provides technical support to member states across the world to effectively use sports in this context. To this end, we have developed guidance tools and training materials that, among others, includes the Lineup Live Up uh, training material and training curriculum for the young people that we will uh, talk more later, and more recently also a set of guidance tools for preventing violent extremism and youth radicalization through sports. We also support member states on developing and integrating sports-based programs like the Line Up, Live Up and other initiatives into national and local crime prevention frameworks. And we promote social developmental approaches to youth crime prevention as part of these holistic interventions that should include but do, should not be limited to law enforcement and criminal justice responses. So using sport as a tool for community development also and creation of safe public spaces we also support states to increase access in sports for selected uh, for young people through the provision of sports equipment, refurbishment of sport facilities, uh, and uh, um, engaging young people and the local communities in youth and sports events. Next slide, please. As we heard, a flagship program for our initiative is called Line Up. Up. It is an evidence-informed, sports-based life skills training curriculum for young people that aims to strengthen their resilience and reduce their engagement to risky, antisocial and delinquent behavior. Through the Line Up Live Up program, sports coaches, teachers, other professionals working with young people can help them develop valuable life skills through a set of interactive sports-based exercises. Line Up Live Up addresses specific mediating factors for youth crime, it helps young people to resist to pressure, to engage in crime and violence, and allows them to practice tolerance, develop their self-esteem, and other valuable personal and social skills. It consists of 10 interactive sessions that each target one or more life skills related to risk and protected factors, and also address young people's attitudes and how these are affected by the normative beliefs and their perceptions of uh, risks related to crime and drug use. Next slide, please. The program was tested and piloted in 12 countries across the globe, and today we are very happy to have with us uh, uh, our partners uh, that will share later their experience in using sports and the Line Up Live Up program in particular uh, in their efforts to address violence and crime and support young people. In addition to these 12 countries, we have also activities in uh, Kenya, Mexico, and others where pilot programs will start soon. The Line Up Live Up practice is uh, quite diverse across these countries in terms of implementation sites and actors involved. The program is implemented in schools, in sports and community-based facilities, but it's also tested in detention facilities and closed institutions for juvenile offenders. It builds partnership, engaging primary state actors at national, regional and local level from different sectors, including social, education, sports, youth sector, health, law enforcement and criminal justice. We also work very closely with civil society organizations and sports federations that can play an essential role as donors but also as implementing partners in supporting state efforts to implement and sustain sports-based programs. Next slide, please. So, in line with our commitment as we know this to evidence-based interventions, we recently also conducted an analysis of monitoring and evaluation data for the pilot trainings that included self-reported data from young people and uh, uh, participating in the program and trainers, but also data from two in-depth impact assessment studies that they were conducted in South Africa and Brazil using control groups and applying baseline and endline studies. The results of the assessments were very promising, indicating that the program uh, was very relevant and effectiveness. With self-reported data from young, so young people surveyed, showing an average of 30% increase in selected life skills and statistically significant changes in indicators linked to perceptions and acceptance of violence and crime. The program was also very successful in engaging young people, achieving very high participation rates. 
And to this end, the role of the sport trainers is building a trustful and positive relationship with young participants and creating a positive and conducive and safe environment for, for, for the young people, it is very crucial. The coaches indeed also reflected on how the program helped them improve their ability to connect with young people and engage them in the very vital discussions. These results underline once more that it is important in investing more in the education, training and support of coaches, of professionals working with young people. This is the highest investment we have to, to make in this, uh, in this type of interventions. The analysis reiterated also that to increase the impact of sports-based programs, it is important that form part of holistic and integrated interventions. Next slide, please. So, in 2019, as we heard, the General Assembly resolution, uh, there was a new General Assembly resolution on integrating sports into crime prevention and criminal justice strategies that recognizes the work of UNODC in this area and further encourage member states to continue uh, working with sports and uh, promote uh, um, uh, the integration of sports in crime prevention criminal justice frameworks. So UNODC, we are going to continue promoting sports in this context and uh, promoting in general social developmental approaches to crime prevention, supporting member states' efforts to this regard. Designing and implementing holistic community-based interventions aiming to engage in young people in local communities that build on sports but combine other education and social support programs that are tailored and adapted to the needs and realities of specific target groups and communities will also be one of uh, our priorities in the way forward. Of course, monitoring and evaluation and research on the impact of sports approaches will remain an integral part of our activities to capture the results and contribute to the evidence on what, but also how sports can be used in this context. We will also continue supporting knowledge sharing on innovative and effective sport programs and promote good practice examples. In fact, this event today offers an excellent opportunity to share these promising practices and lessons learned and with that said, I will stop uh, here my presentation and I will present you our distinguished speakers and great partners, I have to say. So our first speaker is Mr. Hall Hendricks. Uh, Paul is the Director of Sports Development at the Western Cape Department of Cultural Affairs and Sports in South Africa. In his presentation, he will share with us the insights uh, on the Western Cape policy to reach out and support Risk, at risk uh, uh, youth in communities and explain uh, to us how sports based programs are used uh, in the context of local uh, policy of Cape Town uh, uh, to this end. So, Paul, please, the floor is yours. Good morning, everybody. The host will show you the slides of Mr. Paul. Good morning, everybody. Let me share with you. Um, what we have been doing in the Western Cape. Uh, and thank you very much for the opportunity for us to do that. Um, so firstly, if, if I can get the next slide, please. Let me sh share with you our uh, point of departure. So what we did before we did any implementation was to look at our environment and look at the inequities that, that prevailed within our environment. So if you're looking at that picture, you'd see that 15% of our communities uh, have sufficient resources and funds to do what it is uh, that they need to do. But 85% uh, of our communities uh, live in squalor. So what we've done is to look at all of that and say to ourselves, how do we approach crime prevention and how do we assist our communities to develop into becoming um, patriotic citizens uh, of, of the country as such? So clearly we needed to address uh, the 85% uh, to a greater extent. Next slide, please. So if we look at the, the challenges within those inequities, what we try to do is to um, to look at how we can change things. But we found that addressing these inequities um, that were brought about by our past, by the unemployment, poverty, and lack of resources, and the social ills, drugs, etc., this was the challenges that we found. 
and we found that we were trying to address these inequities with old knowledge um, and with old or foreign approaches. And there's a lot of anger and blame given the history of our country. Uh, what we also found that the youth were struggling with was a sense of belonging, a sense of identity and a low self-esteem. We needed to address these challenges. And in our research, what we did was to look at, so how do we make things relevant? How do we make things interesting? How do we make things real? How do we make things um, accessible to the youth? Next slide, please. What we found is that instilled and ingrained in the youth in their subconscious was lots of negativity, lots of anger, lots of blame, um, lots of low self-esteem. This is ingrained in the youth. In fact, it's ingrained in that 85% um, of the communities that you're speaking about. And what we realized was that the response and the reaction of people in the impoverished communities were, were ones of negativity and the way they, they responded to, to any stimulus was to bring forth um, a negative approach. And so clearly what we needed to do was to instill in the subconscious um, an attitude of, of, of one that is values based, an attitude of one that speaks to um, social inclusion, an attitude of one that speaks to respect and love and appreciation for each other. And so we need to look at ways of how we can instill that into the subconscious so it, it becomes part of who they are. And so responses would be one that that focuses on, on positive uh, attitudes and a positive way forward. Next slide, please. Instilling in the subconscious what it is that we needed to to socialize the, the youth particularly was to see how we change our methodology um, both in the classroom as teachers but also on the field as coaches. So what we did is to look at what our approaches were with regards to teaching and coaching. And uh, we know that, that when you are teaching to have content so the content was which which we focused on as the explicit curriculum and in this case we're speaking speaking about recreation and sport and the the research and the resources are there uh, to a certain extent uh, and that is uh, the the of enrichment and the infrastructure that we were doing as generally as coaches uh, we were busy with the skills development and lesson planning but the area that we saw as a void was the context in which we were teaching. We saw as a void, there was a lack of uh, subliminal messaging. There was a lack of the implicit curriculum. Um, and clearly it meant that we needed to focus in this space on, on the values and social inclusion um, that was needed to, to address what was currently in the subconscious um, of the youth. So what we did in all our coaching methodologies our teaching methodologies was to focus on a on a values based and social inclusion based approach, and so all our our teaching has subliminal messaging that speaks to this. And slowly and surely, we socializing the youth through not only school based activities but also after school based activities, sporting activities, arts and culture based activities. There's a a, a, a context in which we're teaching, and it's particularly here that we utilize the, the life skills methodologies of the UNODC um, through the live up uh, uh, through the lineup live up program um, that we've been utilizing uh, and what also added you know what what we learned a lot from was the related impact assessment um, that was conducted by the UNODC so this has taught us and, and given us quite a bit of information as to how we can approach and how we can assist with the with the advancement uh, of the youth. Uh, next slide, please. So our approach with regards to sharing and, and introducing the methodologies that we had was to look at the holistic development of the learner. And here you can see um, 
a, a typical example of a youth in school. What he did was to look at the during school hour activities, and you'll see there the focus was partic particularly on academic activity where the left brain was um, schooled, where the left brain was given more knowledge and experience. And that's really the logical side of the brain. And we found that in our school environment, the focus was mainly on reading, reading calculating, and reasoning. And this took up about six hours of the child's day. And we found that the, the time where the child was out of school and the child had the most um, space was in the hours of 2 o'clock, around 2 o'clock in the afternoon until 8 o'clock, which is 18 hours. So in that 18 hours, what is it that we actually doing that's positive for the youth? What we realized is that because the focus is strictly on academic activity during school hours, there was a lack of physical activity, there was a lack of creative activity, um, which is known as right brain activity. And so because the right brain was unst unstimulated, we found that um, there wasn't positive uh, information filtered in the right brain and this uh, played itself out to have a negative response to youth and so what we needed to do was to introduce positive responses in that positive responses the vehicles that we used was play recreation sport and the mastery of those activities and what we have learned is that through our experiences that the youngsters have taken to this in this space that we started socializing the youngsters, the subliminal messaging um, and the contextualizing of, of um, a way forward uh, for the country, where we started contextualizing the importance of a sense of belonging, the importance of uh, an improved self-esteem, where people became confident in themselves. This was the space that we really started introducing that through our different methodologies that we've been using. Next slide, please. What we then did further was to look at an approach that speaks neighborhood development. So in this neighborhood development approach that we had, we had a holistic field is that we do. And why we looked at the neighborhood was because we realized that the child doesn't live in isolation. However, in that in that space that the child found him or herself, they wasn't a direct link in many cases with the pair, the actual parents of the child. In fact, most of the links that the child has or the sense of belonging that the child has is attached to a grandparent or is attached to a neighbor or aunt or uncle that was looking after them. So we realized what becomes important is to focus on the development um, of, of the roads. And so what we did was to look at schools in closest proximity to each other and improved what it is that we were doing. So if you look at the slide, you will see what we did. We looked at our primary schools in the neighborhood, we looked at the high school in the neighborhood. And then what we did was to place, uh, to assist with the development of the facilities um, at the primary schools and at the high schools. Then so here I've given an example of what we did in one year. Then we improved the baseball facility at the primary school and we improved the softball facility at the high school and similarly we improved the football facility and the hockey facility so so the grounds are there so as a provincial government what we did was to improve the of those grounds to the point of where it's at a world-class level that is built so immediately the the youth of that area understand that this is what's happening in the world. Secondly, they have access to it at the mass participation level, but they also have access to it at the master participation level because now they they have facilities that are so improved, um, they realize that this is what they are going to um, have access to if they are successful um, in what it is that they do. And so what we've, what we've also done, the area that I never mentioned, was that we started establishing clubs. And so you'll see there uh, all those activities leading from ECD right through to primary and high school. Those youngsters have access 
to those schools and they have access to after school hour activities. Um, and in that space, we have what is called the MOD program, which is a participation program. And then we also have um, our school program. And so the youngster has access to, to the facilities and has access to sporting activities from ECD level already, which means roughly from three years old right through to 18, 19, 20 years old. But then we found that there's a space after that and there's this, the, the, the lack of uh, um, sense of belonging. And we found that if we establish these clubs, these sports clubs, that we put out of the participation of the youngsters at the schools, that the youngsters now attach themselves to these sports clubs and these sports clubs actually became their families. These clubs actually became the safe haven. These sports clubs actually became um, the area that gave them their identity, that gave them, that give, that gives them the self-esteem that they're yearning for because they became achievers within these sports clubs and on the sports field. And so instead of them belonging to gangs, they now belong to sports clubs. And at the sports club, the, the teachers were filtering through the, the the coaching methodologies that I spoke about earlier, of where the, the the context of the focus is on on values values based um, um, activities as well as socially inclusive activities. So what we've really done is look at at these in these neighbourhoods at these sports fields which are now being played at with, uh, um, by our school children as well as our youth in that area as well as the families of these youngsters uh, because now they have a space to go to found that at these facilities which is is there for physical education as well as after school our activities and weekend activities we found that it's not just the youngsters coming there it's actually the neighbors and the people of the neighborhood that's coming there which includes their family their aunties their uncles as a consequence of that these neighborhoods have now developed into family-based um activities and spectators and we also use the space for for both participants but also competition we also use the space for identification and talent development um, and what we call these facilities are shared facilities because whilst the facilities are based at a particular school, all the schools get to use it at these shared facilities we have something like approximately 24 schools whose children use these these facilities because these facilities are all within food um, and this has really created a massive change because now we find that our youngsters see their future ahead of them they see that they can have these activities happening during school hours as well as after school hours over weekends and at that we have linked their their participation in these activities linked to work at the end of the school career or to tertiary institution study at the end of the school career um, because they have shown that they are wanting to move to another level of, of life and development uh, and education. So the, this neighborhood development has really brought about uh, a new sense um, of, of who they are. It's brought about a sense of belonging. It's brought about identity for us. Next slide, please. So this slide is an indication of the pipeline through which they go. You'll see they, they start at early childhood development. And so at the other development centers, we actually have play centers and recreational centers. You'll see then they, in their school life, they go to the primary school and they go to the high school. You'll see what we've done is to have after school, our activities um, at our mod centers as well as at our neighboring school centers and then from there they go through to the institution or they go and work or both and at the same time they are given access and opportunities via the, the, the sports club that they belong to so they can play at the federation level they can go even further to high performance centers that we have uh, which are linked to those facilities that we have and they can go to national participation. And what we have found is that when they are participating in the communities and in the neighborhoods, 
they are learning through the coaching methodologies that we that we um, are giving them access. But what we've experienced further is when they are representing their districts or whether when they are in their provinces at the at the national level, they are actually taking these life skills that they have learned through the lineup Liver program. They're actually taking these lessons learned via the, the coaching methodologies that we've been using. And they have been sharing that their, their own actions and through their own experiences and through their own interactions with their, with their um, colleagues and with their um, teammates from other provinces. They are actually sharing experiences with them and they are sharing their way of life with them. And in that way, we have found that it's actually a different approach at a provincial level as well as at the national level as to how youth start meeting with each other and start appreciating each other. Um, we, our experience in the past has been lots of selfishness, there's lots of bickering, there's lots of um, bullying. And with these lessons that have been learned, the sharing of those lessons and the sharing of those experiences has actually changed the way our national teams and our national teams are approaching things. There's much a much better camaraderie, there's much better interaction with each other and appreciation for each other, um, irrespective of what your so-called status in life is or what your poverty life is. There's more an appreciation now of the person and what it is that you bring to the table with regards to your, your personality and your set of values. Uh, next slide. And so the outcomes uh, that we have experienced in the academic space is that there has been improved academic results, a drop in absenteeism, a drop to no vandalism, a greater interest in the school, improved behavior, improved relationships, improved appearance and hygiene, improved self-esteem and self-confidence, a sense of belonging and an identity, emerging role models and improved trust and respect. That's what we found in the academic uh, activity space when we have started um, a focus also on the on the subliminal messaging and a focus also on the hidden curriculum um, which which about and creates the context in which we are teaching when it comes to the after school activities and the weekend activities um, which is activities which is the sports space we have learned that there's been there's clearly been learner development there's been code development there's been school development there's been club development family, social, education, community, provincial, national development because of the interactions and interventions that we've been having and the approach that we've been having. Next slide, please. And so I want to thank the UNODC for the opportunity for us to share our experience and, and our initiatives. Thank them more importantly for what it is that they have um, to us. We can use what they've shared with us and given to us um, and share that with our youth to levels of achievement that we actually have been achieving over these past uh, four to five years. So thank you very much from our side. Thank you. Thank you very much, Paul, for sharing this very interesting, comprehensive approach that you have developed that utilized in a very effective way the foundation of as a tool for individual but also community development and resilience. Uh, as you mentioned, Western Cape was one of the testing and pilot of the line up program as part of the after school activities. And I want to take this opportunity to thank you again and to your team for this excellent partnership. So now we would like to move uh, to uh, another part of the world of Africa. We are going to Central Asia and to Kyrgyzstan. And so allow me to welcome Ms. Sina Rikoma. She is the Deputy Head of International Development of Education of Kyrgyzstan. And in this presentation, we'll share some insights of our joint work in Kyrgyzstan resulted to the effective integration of the Lana Priva program secondary schools curriculum uh, as an effective way to scale up and sustain the results of the program. So, Ms. Matkerikmova, the floor is yours. I'd like to ask the host to share the presentation of Ms. Matt Garikumba. Thank you very much, uh, dear ladies and gentlemen. 
to greet you uh, on behalf of the Ministry of Education and Science of the Kyrgyz Republic and go on with, with our presentation on collaboration with UNODC on li uh, Line Up, Live Up uh, in Schools program. Next slide, please. Uh, in the Kyrgyz Republic, UNODC has been implementing a global initiative on crime prevention among youth through sports since 2017. The initiative aims to prevent crimes and build resilience among vulnerable youth through the promotion and development of uh, sports activities, strengthening the life skills of young people, the key objectives aimed uh, at minimizing factors and building protective factors in relation to crime, violence and drug use. In order to ensure the sustainability of the project, starting from 2019, the Ministry of Education and Science of the Kyrgyz Republic supported the of the lineup uh, program course into the 11th grade curriculum of schools of the uh, Kyrgyz Republic. The minister has been working with UNODC institutionalizing line up Viva program at the Sport Academy of the Kyrgyz Republic with preparation of qualified trainers. Next, uh, in 2020. Uh, 180 school teachers and coaches were trained to fight on life skills training. Up live up uh, life skills program printed and handed to uh, 2,000 schools in the country in Kyrgyz and Ra Russian languages. Approximately 12,000 youth reached, uh, and in 2029, uh, 4,000 more children will participate in the program. Additional to the uh, sustainability of the program in schools, the um, Line Up Live Up program is reflected in the draft concept of the National Strategy of Crime Prevention of Kyrgyz Republic 2020, uh, 2030 programs. Elements of the program are as well reflected in the educational um, curricula of sport universities in the lifestyle courses. On the next slide, you can see uh, some pictures of the joint collaboration. Next slide. In 2019, a training model of physical culture and sports of the Kyrgyz based on the Line Up Live Up program was prepared and approved. 20 teachers of the academy were trained in the training uh, at the for trainers. Adapted teaching materials were developed on the basis uh, of the Line Up Live Up uh, program and were printed with the support of the UNODC and handed over to the Academy. Next slide, please. <clears throat> uh, from 2017 to 2019, Line Up Live Up program, uh, sports festivals were held across the country in cooperation with the UNODC sports federations, tobacco use, drug use, alcoholism among youth. The events were by students and school children from universities and colleges, as well as persons with disabilities. On the next slides, you can see that during five years, the project has <clears throat> actively supported forums, sports events, and campaigns. More than 50,000 People from all, all the regions participated in the event. As a result of this event, people learned the skills necessary for their career and growth and created networks of acquaintances with young people and representatives of young organizations, youth and students. As part of the Line Up Live Up initiative, TV trailers and social videos were filmed, each highlighting a different aspect on, of how sport can help prevent antisocial behavior and help young people set goals, achieve them, and lead healthy lifestyles. The videos were broadcast during prime time on 11 channels in a number of sports channels and social networks, reaching all all the population on tele television and up to 30, uh, 36,000 on social networks. To sum up, I can, uh, to sum up 
uh, the collaboration with the UNODC on mentioned problems say that the uh, change result, the given number of use, uh, the sustainability is the sustainability is also there because the curric curriculum program now involves this program. So we believe that the future of the program will be um, right. So thank you very much. This is all from our side, from Kyrgyzstan. If you have any questions, feel free to ask through the chat. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Rotejkova. Uh, you have gone very, you know, illustrated in a very nice way our joint work and all the steps taken um, by the Ministry of Education in Kyrgyzstan uh, to integrate Lina Pivap uh, as a part of a quality physical education in the school school, uh, having the objective of values and skill development for students. Uh, that was a great partnership and we are looking forward to continue working with you in the future. So uh, now we're going to move again to another part of the world. We heard already how sports uh, can be used in the community context. Uh, we also heard about uh, integrating uh, sports for life skills training in the school's curriculum. But now we will go to Lebanon in the future, where the lineup uh, was uh, adapted and introduced in the context of education programs for juvenile and children in conflict with the law. Uh, with the aim to promote physical and mental health and well-being, uh, also support their social integration and prevent recidivism. So I would like to welcome Mr. Reyes. Rita works for the interior in Lebanon and she's the head of the juvenile detention facility in the Rumian prison. So Rita, the floor is yours. I would like to ask the host to share her presentation. Thank you. Rita, we cannot. Rita? It seems that there is a technical issue. Until we resolve it, um, in order to save time, we can possibly move to the next presentation and we'll come back to Rita. So um, uh, I would like to, to present uh, Ms. Hala Halaf. Um, Hala uh, is, uh, is the head of the program development for the uh, uh, football organization, which is an umbrella NGO that supports uh, uh, sports-based programs across the world. And uh, in uh, her presentation, to underline the importance safeguarding children at risk uh, and youth at risk in the grass uh, sports programs as an obligation but also as a requirement to build this whole effective crime prevention framework. Uh, I would like to ask Hala to join us and uh, uh, present uh, the approach of uh, uh, World uh, Street uh, Football Organization. Um, so uh, I would like to ask the host to share the presentation. Thank you very much, Georgia. Um, first off, I would like to thank everyone for taking the time to attend the session today. And I thank all fellow speakers for sharing their insights on the various valuable topics. Uh, we work with different um, sectors of development and humanitarian actions. In fact, the Street Football World Network is not part of the Line Up Live Up program. Um, however, we all recognize the power of sports as a tool for social change. Um, and, and secondly, allow me to take the opportunity to join my uh, fellow women in recognizing our strength, resilience and perseverance yesterday, today and, and every minute of every day. Um, now for my presentation. Um, I'm happy to speak uh, uh, with you briefly about causes and effects and about issues and contributions to solutions and about how sports, and in our case, football, can address many challenges youth face today. Um, according to UNESCO, 
Mexico, um, youth make up almost 1.2 billion um, of 2.2 billion children uh, of the world population. And this number is expected to grow. In the support for development sector, youth programming happens at community and grassroots level, tackling localized and contextualized issues and addressing pertinent needs at the community and society level. Um, next slide, please. And in the case of Sri Purple World, we have been for the past two decades and still are privileged to have direct reach to an admirable grassroots movement that uses sports and particularly football as a tool for social action. With more than 140 organizations located in 90 countries, we are taking a pact as a football for good sector to contribute to the global agenda and measure the impact of our work as a collective. We agree to take a stance on sharing knowledge and stating local principles and raising awareness on the importance of safeguarding children and at-risk youth who participate in sports for development programming. Next slide, please. According to UNESCO database, at least one in four youth aged 15 to 29 is affected by crime, violence, or conflict in some way. The reasons are chiefly related to economic disparities, lack of opportunities, social injustice, amongst others. Within the support for development sector, young participants face similar socioeconomic challenges. Poverty, unemployment, social injustice, and unequal or lack of education are pertinent issues that youth face, face across the board, regardless of geography. The statistics on this slide are based on Street Pools network serving close to 2 million young people. Next slide, please. In a sport for development programming ecosystem, pra practitioners dedicate their lives, time, and passion in programming, planning to tackle the real and threatening issues facing vulnerable groups. They fundraise, manage, and provide guidance and support to their program participants, and the list goes on. The majority of practitioners understand youth issues, needs, and challenges. But setting frameworks for safeguarding and harm prevention are often not integrated into planning at the onset. Moreover, vulnerable groups, including children and at-risk youth, cannot obtain information about their rights for support and protection from the various systems they have access to. Next slide, please. Conducting a survey at the turn of last year indicated the need for action with more than 8,000 adults filling various positions within the Football for Good movement alone, dedicated and systemized knowledge and support systems on the topic of safeguarding were requested. Next slide, please. Towards the end of last year, the UEFA Foundation and Street Football World partnered together to support practitioners in institutionalizing safeguarding at the foundation of their program planning. Based on the principles of the Convention on the Rights of the Child, the UEFA Member Association Safeguarding Principles, and through partnerships with safeguarding experts in the field of sports, a knowledge and training track on the topic dedicated and targeted for practitioners who are implementing development programs through grassroots sports is going to be launched with the ambition of minimizing harm on vulnerable groups while raising their awareness on their rights, such as access, that is formal or alternative access to healthcare, psychosocial support, education, non-formal education, and other opportunities that are available to them. This program will be launched by Q3 this year and led by a steering committee of experts in the field. Next slide, please. Raising awareness for both adults and vulnerable groups can indirectly build systems within the support for development sector ecosystem to discourage youth from believing that crime and violence is their last resort. Um, I chose this quote in closing from Shubham, one of our young leaders based in India, and our ambition is to change the narrative of stories like Shubham. The ambition which most of the sector's actor, actors are pushing for is one where children and at-risk youth grow up in environments that promote and safeguard their well-being and aware of and advocate for their rights as children to grow up realizing their full potential.
in providing this equal system of knowledge, we are hopeful that indirect prevention of crime and violence should become a critical success indicator and that youth participating in sports development programs find their voice and find their opportunities to excel. Um, that's it on my, my end. Thank you all. Thanks, Georgia and UNODC for your efforts in bringing this group together. Over back to you. Thank you, Hala. Thank you very much. Uh, it is sports programs to be effective. They have to create a safe and conducive environment for children and young participants that allow them to grow and develop uh, and promote their well-being. Um, we are also the same vision, I think. Uh, and just in fact, although we haven't uh, yet, uh, you know, formalized our partnership at a, at a um, headquarter level, uh, the truth is that we are working very close with many of your uh, partner organizations in the field in many countries. And uh, working with civil society organizations, it's in the core of our activities and we will continue doing so. So thanks a lot. And uh, now I hope the problem with uh, Rita has been resolved. So we'll go back to Lebanon, uh, where Mr. Rita Dabais uh, is going to, um, uh, through her presentation, explain us how uh, sports and the LANAP LIVA program in particular can be used in the context of social rehabilitation programs for children in conflict with the law. So, Rita, the floor is yours. I would like to ask the host to share the presentation. Rita, we can see you, but we are not uh, hearing you. Perhaps you can try with your camera off. You can try to refresh your browser also. It's a pity. Technical issues happen and we cannot avoid them, but Rita, you can try to refresh your browser so you get reconnected. Huh? So in order to keep track with the time of the event, uh, as we're, we're going to make an effort to get connected with Rita, hopefully it will work. Um, in the meantime, we would like to share with you um, a, a short video that uh, captures, I think, the power of sports in helping young people to stay away from crime and promote their pro-social behavior in a very nice way. This video is developed in Uzbekistan and is a result of a multi-agency partnerships that brought together UNODC with the Ministry of Education, the Ministry of Sports, the National Prosecutor Office, and of course the National Olympic Committee and other UN uh, and sports uh, organizations uh, in the country. So I would like to ask the host to share the video.
Sometimes life leads you down the wrong path. You lose control and make mistakes. You think you can handle it all by yourself. But it can lead to irreversible consequences. Sport teaches you to follow the rules and achieve your goals. It helps you cope with stress and control your emotions. It teaches you how to make the right choices. I choose sport. Thank you. This is just a sample of the work we do in uh, different countries so to raise awareness on sports and also bring together the sports sector and support uh, uh, member states efforts uh, on uh, using sports for, for, uh, for, for reaching out to young people in a positive uh, way. So let's try to have a last attempt to get connected with Rita. I hope it worked this time. Otherwise, unfortunately, we'll have to move on with the closing of the event. So Rita. Uh, unfortunately, technology is not with us today, and this happens in virtual events. So um, it is unfortunate, but uh, we will uh, make sure that we will share the slides of the presentation uh, along with the other material of the event, so you will have access to it. So I would like to ask now uh, Marco Texera to, to come again for the closing of the event. Marco, the floor is yours. Thank you, Georgia. It naturally, it's not because of the ACAP with the technology that it didn't allow us to hear our, our panelists that the message is not loud and clear, and the video also uh, illustrates that. Uh, I would like to start the closing remarks by thanking our expert uh, panelists for sharing their experiences, their lessons learned, uh, and uh, how they have used and have seen being used sports as a tool to prevent youth crime, violence, and drugs. Uh, there are a few takeaways from this section, and I want to try to go through some of the points that I have here that I do think illustrates some of the main messages. First of all, sport can be used in different contexts. As you can see, we have panelists from different regions to engage and support young people in schools, in the communities, or part of the state institutions to prevent their victimization and their engagement in uh, crime or even to complement social reintegration and rehabilitation efforts of those in contact with the law. So sports are obviously a holistic part of the exercises for crime prevention. The impact of sport-based intervention is obviously when they are uh, closely and the, the impact is closely linked with the way they are designed and implemented in order to ensure they are tailored programs and interventions to, an, uh, to address the necessity, the needs, the gaps and the vulnerabilities identified either in a special group, either in a community, or obviously in a social context that they aim to address. Youth violence and crime requires comprehensive, well-designed and evidence-based response that addresses the risk and also enable protective factors uh, and sport-based interventions are obviously designed on those two uh, uh, essential understandings. Also, they are part and they should be part of other social development programs for young people. And obviously that will entail a more comprehensive responses to the challenges and the needs. It's obviously critical that there is an effort to institutionalize, to ensure sustainability of those initiatives 
And this is another point that I want to, to highlight, and I think uh, some of the speakers mentioned that. In mind, obviously, condition of global coordinator of the program for the implementation of DOA Pro, DOA declaration. I am proud to see the results. Uh, I am proud of what my colleagues are working under the pillar of Youth Crime Prevention Youth Sports Initiative have produced in the ground, the achievements made by the state partners with whom we have worked, and also the achievements based in other type of partnerships that are not only with state partners, with non-state parties. Uh, to achieve these results, the cross-sectoral partnership have been and are still a good example of good practices. And also around the world, we understand that to design sport-based interventions, to have a positive impact, partnerships are on the center to improve efficiency and obviously to get the best outcome. I would say though that those alliances are important, not only to sustain achievements, but also scale up results. Obviously, we together have potentially to do much more. Uh, to effectively address crime and build just and safe societies, social development programs are equally important to law enforcement and other criminal justice actors. This is not only a field for non-criminal justice actors. There is also a space to engage and promote this as part of the responses at law enforcement level and criminal justice response level also. The Kyoto Declaration that was approved recently, reiterates the importance of youth engagement in crime prevention efforts, setting as a priority the prevention of victimization and the recruitment or reducing the recruitment of young people by organized criminal groups and networks. And this includes, uh, obviously, the aspects also of violent extremism and also terrorist groups as factors of exploring vulnerabilities of young generations. Obviously, uh, from my perspective and our perspective, looking to the future, and it was requested to UNODC as part of the General Assembly Resolution 74-170 on sport and crime prevention to continue to integrate sports uh, into our crime prevention strategies and obviously part of our support to the member states. To, to this objective and having that in consideration, and building of what we have already achieved as part of implementing the DOA Declaration, UNODC will continue to develop guidelines, tools, and sharing good practices among peers, how we can effectively use sports as a tool for crime prevention. From our perspective, we also want to continue to further promote sports and other educational and social programs for youth, an integrated part of holistic crime prevention policies that not only prevent youth crime victimization, but also engage them as actors and positive actors for change, a transformational change of their own societies. Obviously, this is part of the framework of the sustainable development goals objectives that youth are also actors of a positive generational transformation of their own societies. Sports. Uh, are not only effective skills for development and learning, can also be instrumental in development of local institution and local interventions that create safer public spaces for youth and local communities to be also safer places for social development. Uh, engaging local communities and local stakeholders and building stronger partnership with both of them and uh, are also complementary to the partnerships at state level. And these partnerships that I mentioned in our perspective, including, including also civil society organizations and non-governmental organizations, they are actually key actors on this field also in our perspective. Responding to member states' requests for target interventions and acknowledging it that we can reach the more vulnerable youth, uh, it's same, and our aim is to develop tailored assistance and guidance tools on how to use sports to reach that vulnerable groups that allow us obviously to have a more social intervention with a more solid impact. We also aim to step up the efforts on the prevention of violence through and within sports to further promote a multi-agency approach and obviously strengthen partnership and cooperation with another important sector, the sports sector itself, which is for us can be catalytic as providing role models 
of what the youth can be in the future, to provide a vision of this transition between a, a citizen and a role model in the sports dimension, if the right choices are there. The prevention of radicalization and violent extremism through, through sports is another area where we would like to expand our work. And we have already developed some work and we have a tailored guidance tool that will help member states in preventing radicalization and violent extremism and obviously how youth can be part of this effort and the sports, of course, another ingredient to promote inclusion and social cohesion. There are some of our future priorities on moving our activities further. Obviously, innovation, community-based interventions, and obviously sports-based intervention will for sure be part of our continuous discussions. And in the future, we'll hopefully continue to promote sports as a positive tool for social, social inclusion. Let me once again appreciate all our speakers. Obviously, a special word to the state of Qatar for their commitment and enabling us to continue to program and deliver activities in uh, youth crime prevention through sports dimension. And finally, uh, a special big thank you to my team, Georgia, Lucia. They are in this call also. A big thank you to the rest of the team of UNODC for continuing to basically promote sports as a tool for crime prevention. It's been a pleasure to be with you in this virtual space. And I hope wherever you are in the globe that you maintain your you and the respective families healthy and for sure sports continue to be of catalytic importance for crime prevention. Thank you very much. George, over to you. Thank you very much, Marco, for the nice uh, closing of the event. It captured very well, I think, of the discussions today. And uh, I would like also to thank from my side the uh, speakers. I uh, again to apologize for, for not being able to get connected uh, with um, uh, Mr. Rita Dabes from Lebanon. Um, and I would like also to thank all the viewers and to remind you that uh, the recording of the event uh, will be available in the website of the platform, but also our website uh, and the presentation for those that they weren't able to uh, be part uh, of uh, our meeting today. So thank you all, wherever you are, stay healthy, and we're looking forward to continue our partnership and uh, cooperation to, on using sports for making our societies uh, resilient and uh, better, just and fair, and engaging young people in a positive way. Thank you all. Bye.